how to create a successful finger tunnel on the violin or viola. A finger tunnel basically refers to the skill of putting down a finger on one of our three lower strings and making sure that there is enough clearance to play the higher open string, meaning that the finger cannot touch the adjacent higher string. So for example, playing D on the A string and making sure that my E is clear. This is a skill that is introduced very early on in the Suzuki method and for very good reason. Learning how to clear an open string with the finger tunnel allows us to be well on our way to execute clear string crossings, develop good speed, dexterity, play double stops, and have clean intonation through the correct positioning of our fingers. We become aware of this important skill either when we have to suddenly play tricky double stops like thirds and fourths in which the higher finger is on the lower string or when we have to do string crossings quickly and efficiently. One common challenge that many players face is that the finger has trouble clearing that open string and it wants to touch two strings at once when we don't want it to. Like, like that. Of that. So, what are some things that we can do to correct this? Hey, this is Ina Langerman from Violina.live helping you along your musical journey. Let's go over four left hand skills and see where the problem might be. And also, we'll go over some tips and exercises that you can implement right away to help you be more consistent with your finger tunnels. The first basic skill is that our fingers must lift and drop from the string coming from our bass knuckles. So one common mistake that I see beginners make is that their fingers, they lift and drop from this joint right here instead of the bass knuckle. So general rule is that we must lift and drop from the bass knuckle, that way the finger retains more or less the same shape no matter whether the finger is up or down. Skill number two is that the fingers must come down from above the string and land at a slight angle. The finger does not go parallel to the neck, nor does it go perpendicular. Usually, by default, most natural positions that they go down at a slight angle, and it's important that they come from above the strings. Of course, be careful that you don't overdo this either, because another thing we want to avoid is placing the finger on our nail and having the finger collapse this way. That's really bad technique and we want to avoid that because it can cause all kinds of problems, poor intonation, bad dexterity. So again, slight angle on the finger pad from above. One common mistake is putting the finger down too flat, which of course would not allow you to um, have a clearance of the string above to create a finger tunnel. This is more common on the lower strings, D and G string for violin, G and C for viola, and that's because those strings are further to, the, to our left um, from the point of view of the player. So this is where we're gonna go to number three and check our elbow alignment. For good left hand position, it's important that our left elbow is aligned with the base knuckle of the pinky. So you can always use the bow to check if they are aligned. In this case, they are. Check if the pinky can reach the string from above, the chosen string that you are trying to cover. Not the one that you're trying to clear, but the one you're trying to cover. So let's say I want to cover the D string and I want to have clearance on the A string. I want to make sure that my pinky can reach, can reach the note A on the D string. And I know I can reach it comfortably and my pinky will retain its round shape if my elbow and this base knuckle are aligned. In which case, what does the arm have to do to make it happen? The arm has to adjust by having the elbow come inwards. Of course, also don't over rotate. We don't want the elbow coming in any more than it needs to, because again, if you overdo it, it's gonna cause all kinds of problems. You might get injury right over here. It can create problems, cause the shoulder to come forward too much. And of course, the fingers will be going down at a strange angle. Um, Coming around like this works for extensions on some occasions, but that's not what we're talking about here. So while we are on this topic of alignment, let's also check number four, our wrist. Is the wrist aligned with the elbow? Because I can very much have this aligned with this, but what if my wrist is doing some funky shape like this? What's gonna happen? Well, first of all, that can really harm the wrist. That's really not safe. And secondly, if I do it this way, my fingers go down flatter and 
there is no way I can clear the open string. Now, as far as thumb position goes, this is going to be very different for everybody. So I'm actually not going to address it in this video, but I did make a separate video about left thumb positioning and what my thoughts about it are. I'm going to leave the link to that right up here and in the description below so you can watch that later. Now that we went over the basics, let's look at three things that you can do to land your finger more consistently so that you can clear the open string above it. But before we get to it, if you're getting any value from this video, please give it a quick thumbs up down below to help support this channel and so that YouTube is more likely to share this with other folks. The first thing we can start doing is practicing bringing our hand a little closer to the neck of the violin and while doing so also bring your knuckles in practice getting those knuckles in like this so that it creates a more natural curve in the fingers we want that natural curve so that we can clear the string for the finger tunnel you can experiment with different fingers let's say i'm going to practice on the second finger and I'm going to put it on the A string right now. My hand is over here and I'm going to practice bringing it a little bit closer this way and getting those knuckles in a little bit. So you can see knuckles are out and then practice bringing the knuckle in. Knuckles out, knuckles in. This almost looks like a vibrato exercise, but actually this kind of uh, gives you an idea of the difference in the finger position when it's more flat and when it's more round. And especially the third finger can really benefit from this exercise and the fourth finger, but I say third finger because it's very commonly used for finger tones, more common than fourth finger. So you can see if I put on the three like this, it looks okay, but my E string is not clear. So I have to bring my knuckle in a little bit like this and now it's clear. You see such a difference, this position versus this. The second thing we can experiment with is what side of the strings we place our fingers notice that our strings they are in fact round they are cylindrical if you really zoom in on them from the side which means we can place our finger on different sides of the same string so actually if i show it closer i'll use the part of the fingerboard closer to the camera you see if i place my finger on that side of the string versus the E string side, I'm placing on the A string right now, there's a bigger chance I'm gonna clear the string on here. So let's try this on the D string. I'm gonna place my finger normally, the way I normally would, but right now my finger pad is touching a little bit the A string. So that's a problem. So what I'm, all I have to do is get the finger go over to that side of the string. Almost like the finger, almost like the finger is grabbing the string from that side, which actually leads me to an excellent exercise that you can do right away, which is left hand pizzicato. Because in order to do left hand pizzicato, what we have to do is get the finger from the lower side and it's going to go right. The finger grabs the string from here. And this is a similar angle that we can put the finger down in order to clear the open string for our finger tunnel. And you can practice this with all the fingers. If you can do a good left hand pit, then you actually automatically create the right positioning of the fingers. The preparation for the pit, if I prepare for the pit, but I don't actually pluck, I just pull on the string slightly, I actually create the correct finger angle and position. And finally, the next thing you can check as you're doing all of these, let's say um, you've gone through everything that I mentioned so far, but on the E string, sometimes for some reason there is a problem. One common issue that comes up is that the base of the first finger gets in the way on the highest string. So for example, I want to play the note B on the A string and I want to clear the E. And as you can hear, I did not do it. Well, what's wrong? My finger is not touching the E string. What might be the problem? I can bring it in like this. I can bring the wrist in. It's still a problem. Well, the problem is that the base of the first finger that makes contact with the instrument 
it's now touching the E string. That's the problem. So if you notice this also, just kind of be aware of it and it's okay to release that contact with the instrument. And actually this is definitely common for certain double stops or certain string crossings. Um, if I'm going from B to open E, it's actually okay to release over here a little bit. So I'm gonna release. But if I don't, I have a problem, right? So I have to release here. So you definitely consider, um, check if some parts of your palm get in the way so you can create more clearance uh, by removing some contact with the neck of the instrument. Thank you so much for watching and if you found these tips useful and you know someone else who can benefit from them, share this video with a friend or a colleague. If you would like a summary of all my content in both video and written form, I have a bi-monthly newsletter that goes out twice a month on the 1st and 15th of each month. Links down in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell and happy practicing.